everyone and welcome to another episode of Erin's Book Club. I have a review to do for you. Um, this is an interesting book. First of all, I'm not really impressed with the cover, but this is called A Reckoning by Linda Spaulding. Um, I guess this is the advanced reader's copy, but I didn't get to it for quite some time. Um, and when I first opened the book and read the like introduction from the editor, I was really excited because the other editor had a lot of wonderful things to say and, and about it. And I was very intrigued and the writing was just phenomenal. But there was one big drawback about this entire book. Um, but let me read the back of it so that you understand where we're working from here. It opens in the spring of 1855, when John Dickinson is involved in a shameful secret that will require a, tra a tragic decision. The family's resources have been wasted by a reckless brother who holds all of them hostage. And adding fuel to John's desperation, the enslaved workers have been visited by a Canadian abolitionist who pr pushes them to escape. Bree does, and his pursuit to freedom will involve dangerous, a dangerous quest to find his mother and child in Canada. Meanwhile, the Dickinsons become fugitives of another kind, escaping their losses in a wagon en route to the west that will eventually be loaded into the Missouri River boat for a dark adventure. Forests and river prevail in the story, and each person will be tested, especially a 13-year-old Martin whose lonely journey with a pet bear is almost mythic. Spalding writes with irresistible force and breathtaking passion. Her language is stunning, her voice unique. A reckoning confirms a place in the forefront of Canadian literature. Yes, the, the, the writing is epic, but one great big thing. First of all, this is a non-spoiler-free review. There will be spoilers in this review. So if you have not read the book, I suggest that you stop watching now, read the book, and come back. Um, that being said, before I even get into the notes that I've left on this book, the abolitionist that comes and tries to get all the slaves to run away, um, I forget what his name is, but anyway, he thinks of himself as this, this amazing hero that saves these slaves and, and is doing the right thing and, and that kind of thing, but all he does is go into this, this plantation where all these slaves are and says, you guys all need to run away, here's a bunch of compasses, and then he goes back home and like, you know, waits for them to show up in the comfort of his own home. He doesn't actually help any of them escape, he just, here's a compass and this is what you need to do. And a bunch of them escape and only one that I know of survives. And he doesn't know who's going to survive or who isn't, he doesn't seem to care. And he, he's another one that isn't portrayed as the villain, but I really think he is, because he just seems to care about his own like his own I don't even know what the right the way he looks you know now the real villain this John villain this father is just an evil evil man and so involved in, in himself and how important he is that he doesn't realize that he's destroying the people around him um, and the the wife who's tolerating him but only does it because she's like like overdosing on laudanum, laudanum, I think that's how you say it, um, to medicate for certain areas. Just, it's a phenomenal book. The writing is absolutely amazing. Even, even, let me just, so, so the intro of the editor had me so intrigued. I had to put it down as it was bedtime. I didn't think that this one would be easy to put down. And I was right. It wasn't easy to put down. If I had started that night, I probably wouldn't have gotten any sleep. And the characters perfectly, I said they're perfectly in depth, which for me is, is something. Um, <sighs> delights in heartbreak, I also said. Such well-written pain. And she, she does. She just, every aspect of pain is um, contemplated and thrown up there on the page for you, everybody to understand. Um, there's a sign, there's a, just as an example, there's a line here that says the character was feeling sad and adult. Like, to be adult is to be sad. And, and reality is, a lot of times that's here too. And, and nowadays, to be an adult is to be sad. Because there's so much pressure that you forget the joy of life. You just, you have to survive life and not enjoy it. And that, she gets, gets right to the bone there. And, and says it in such a short, sweet way. Um, 
has a real understanding of how cruel the true written word can be, how inadequate the true written word can be. And she she takes the written word to describe that. It's amazing how she works. Um, the confusion of growing up with a hard father added to the confusion of the slave trade. She seems to have a pretty good grasp of the slave trade. Um, and what they have to deal with. I don't think she has a good grasp of the slave, like the individual slave and how they're feeling and what, what they're going through. It's almost like she's looking in on this person and isn't following how that person might actually be feeling. But the actual slave trade, she knows her facts and is going through them. The one big thing about this um, book, and it, it it's such a letdown. Um, so she does all this epic writing and gets you all excited and, and you know, can't wait to find out more. And then at the end, everything just kind of gets tied up, but there isn't, you jump from there in this major struggle to like the family. The family all gets separated. The wife runs away for a little bit and they're all like camping, like the ones that ran away are camping out on the side of the river. And then in the very next chapter, they're all together again and building a house. You don't go, she just, there's no journey. It's just, that's the way it is. And the same thing when the, the boy is um, run away from his father because his father wanted him to kill the bear and he couldn't do it. And so he travels around with his bear and in the end he shows the bear where to hibernate and then leaves the bear and goes back to his father like everything's fine. Like no, we went through all of this struggle and, and all of this learning and all of this character growth and how the characters are finally stronger for it. And in the end they all go back to where they started just at a different place. So they may have moved physically, but emotionally, the people are all in the same place and they're all with the same struggles. Like, even even the, the slave, when he does finally find his family, he doesn't actually join his family because he doesn't want to interfere with their life. Like, it's the ending is such a letdown. And this is the one time, the one time where I think the character has gone through so much grief in their travels that I would have been perfectly okay with everybody getting a happy ending. And if any of you guys have watched my reviews, for me to say that is huge because I'm all about the bad ending and the unhappy ending and the non-storybook ending. But she beat up these characters all the way through. I would have, I would have at the very least enjoyed having the father have some kind of come up that's where he realizes what he is and the cruelty that he is. And he hasn't. He's, he's the same cruel, nasty man. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe that's what she's trying to tell everybody is we don't learn from our mistakes. I, I don't know. But it's a book that I'm going to keep forever because I thoroughly enjoyed reading it and it was a quick read. But wow, guys, I mean, despite the ending, the reading itself is worth the effort because the writing is amazing. So A Reckoning by Linda Spaulding. I highly recommend it. I, I think that this would be a great book to read and it's it's realism to its core. So thanks very much guys for listening to me rant about another book and I will let you know when I have another book read. Bye guys!